Hey everyone, welcome back, or welcome if you're new. Nevertheless, one second, I just want to spray some vanilla room spray. I just think it smells so good. I love the smell of vanilla. If you don't, don't come for me. Totally fine. You know, we all have our preferences. Anyway, moving on. I wanted to really quickly just hop on here. Oh my God, I sound like a YouTuber. <laughs> hop on. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about resiliency really quick. And if this is something that you find interesting, I would love to make a more in-depth video about it. So I wanted to first share two people that I feel really encompass resiliency. And that would be R. Kelly's ex-wife. She endured so much, so much pain and grief and just she, I remember, said she didn't know, like, how she was going to make it just because of all, like, the psychological abuse. You know, they were married from 1996 to 2009. That's a really long time. And she, she speaks about how awful their marriage was. And that it was like a horror story. And it's just so sad that she had to go through that. And I will talk more about her story. I want to do a whole video on just R. Kelly, him, and his ex-wife's story. And also Aaliyah because... She was a minor when R. Kelly was like, quote unquote, married to her. I say quote unquote, because she was a minor. So who, legally she wasn't, couldn't be married to him until after. I don't, we'll, we'll go to get into that another time. And then another person who demonstrates resiliency to me is Britney Spears. And I know Britney has been in the headlines a lot. But I also think it's good that this time, it's not like 2007, 2008, where everything was bashing Britney. This is bringing awareness. And Britney even said she was so appreciative for her fans to continue to bring this awareness to allow her freedom. And so for me, I just feel like it's really important to, for us to know like, Britney Spears was in a conservatorship for 13 years. She could not make phone calls. She could not drive a car. She couldn't have access to social media. She got an allowance for money she earned. She was forced to see therapists. She was forced to take medication and all dangling her children in front of her and using it as a way to control her. And even when she was tired, there was a video I saw on YouTube where she said she had 102 fever and she still performed in Vegas because she had to. And it's just so sad the way the media treated her, the way the public did a disservice to her, or at least our judicial system, because she should have never been in a conservatorship to begin with. Nevertheless, I digress. Um, but now here we are out of the conservatorship or, you, you know, and 13 years she survived and she still did her job and she still fought to be with her children. And I just, I, I want to explore more and, then un and unpack more. Where does that resiliency come from? What can we learn from these women and people in general who have gone through really hard shit and survived and found a way to make it through the other side, through the darkness? Because that's so hard to do. And I think sometimes we always hear the, the hashtag goals and the wins, but we don't talk about when you fall and you feel like you cannot get up, like Sisyphus is rock. And so I think it's just 
a really important topic to talk about, especially when the statistics of people's mental health and anxiety and depression right now are insane and not insane and like using a stigma. No, it's just like, it's just appalling to me that we do not take mental health as seriously as physical health. And I think the more we talk about people who have overcome things, the more we can feel less ashamed in the struggle and just sit through it, ride the wave and know it'll be okay because R. Kelly's wife, ex-wife went through it. And I want to look up her, I want to like give her more credit instead of just saying R. Kelly's ex-wife. Her name was Drea and it still is Drea, you know, <laughs> she's alive. Andrea Lee. And Andrea, like, she found a way. Britney Spears found a way. So it's like we could tell ourselves, well, they found a way. I'll, I could find a way. And it's okay to be struggling right now. And I think our society, we need to give societal permission to struggle and not attach so much external judgment because life is not an Instagram filter. Life is messy and it's hard and you struggle and then you get back up and then you feel like you were just kicked again, kicked down. And it's so challenging sometimes. Life is also so beautiful. The dichotomy is real, but I think it's so important to talk about that vast difference and that it's okay to not always feel like you're thriving because no one feels like they're thriving 100% of the time. And if they tell you that they are, they're lying. <laughs> so anyway, if you liked this kind of brief synopsis of my feelings regarding resiliency, if you want me to talk about, you know, Britney Spears and the conservatorship more, totally can talking about mental health on social media and how it is negatively impacting us let me know anyway thanks talk to you later bye